This is Ben Woods interviewing for the Oklahoma Living Legends in June of 1979. We're at Shawnee at the Shawnee Milling Company, and we're interviewing Mr. Woody Spybuck. And I would like to get the spelling of the last name. S P Y B U C K. Spybuck. Woody Spybuck. Now your real name. Your 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 real name is what? Thomas Woodrow Spybuck. Thomas Woodrow Spybuck. The, uh, I wonder, to begin with, we'd like to ask who your parents were and uh, uh, how, they, uh, uh, how they came to, if they came to this part of the country, how they, how they came here, including your mother's maiden name. A little bit about your family. Well, my father's name is George Spybuff. He's a Cherokee Indian. My mother is Rosie Chisholm. She's Cherokee and Creek. Where did they come from? Well, father come from back east. I don't exactly know where. But uh, mother, she was raised, I heard, I just heard this, around uh, Shawnee, here at Shawnee. Now, when you say east, you're talking about eastern uh, Indian territory. Mm -hmm. right? Back in east of Muskogee, back in there. Uh, where were you born? I was born in Tulsa County, a little old town called Superior, Oklahoma. Superior, Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, what year were you born? 1914. 1914. And uh, the, uh, you, could you tell us a little bit about uh, your uh, growing up in Superior at that period of time? Well, I don't know. There's just a lot about me growing up over there, I just, about six years old, about seven years old, I went to school there. So uh, didn't stay long there and they sent us to a boarding school. We left the boarding school then and we got back home at Period, when we left there and moved this way. Where was the boarding? What was the name of the boarding school? Concho, Oklahoma. Oh, you were the Concho school? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Why you, uh, what years were you there? I was there in eight, 1918 to no, 1922 to 26. Could you tell us a little about the Concho school of this period? Well, at that time it was a pretty nice school. Everybody got along. There was no difficulties there. How many students did you have? Well, it's hard to say. I, at that time, I was just a kid. I wouldn't try to give you an estimate how many is there, but there was, I'd say, a hundred, say, a hundred and fifty boys. You were actually in grade school during this period, or in uh, your elementary school. Do you recall any highlights of the school that while you were there? No. What sort of schedule would you keep at Concho School? About, uh, well, we work, go to school a half a day, and work a half a day. And uh, what did you work? We worked at a farm there. They had a farmer. And part of the boys worked the farm, and the other worked the dairy barn, and uh, some worked carpenter shops, bakery. What you work? I worked the dairy barn. The uh, what? What all were your responsibilities? Did you milk? Just milk. That was all. And of course, all the milk was all the milk, and of course, by hand. Mm-hmm. Uh, what time did you get up? We got up four o'clock in the morning. How many how many cows you Oh, I'd I'd say a hundred and fifty right at it. But how many you would you milk in a day? Well, we milked two cows each morning. Each boy in there, I think there was fifteen of us boys. Yeah. I might mention is, uh, that uh, we have some other people with us on this because some of them are going to be asking questions. Uh, uh, Richard Garrity from uh, uh, Midwest City, 
who is a writer, has a number of questions I think he will be wanting to ask as we go along. Uh, uh, Bill Ford, the Shawnee Milling Company, who is a, a friend of Woody, and uh, Judge and uh, Mrs. Uh, Knox Byram from uh, Shawnee. And I'm inviting any of you to, to enter in with questions whenever we want. Richard is a writer, and I think we has a number of questions that he will be wanting to ask uh, in, about the area. Um, so you're invited whenever you wish to, to uh, break in and ask any questions. I wonder if you could uh, tell us about the, P the administrators of the Concho School at that time that you remember that may stand out in your memory. This is Richard Gary. Cheyenne Arapaho School. That's what I'd like to know, too. You're part Cherokee and part Creek. Uh, no, Cherokee. yeah. And then Arapaho School, which is the plain Indian. I think that time all Indian kids could go there. It, was it the Quaker School? Was it run by the Quakers? Uh, Baptist, I think. Mm -hmm. Do you remember any of the people at the, uh, any of the administrators or teachers that stand out in your memory of the council school? Well, it's been so long, <laughs> I kind of forgot those people. There was a council community there. Mm -hmm. uh, how, how did you, did you get into the council community much? No, we stayed there at school most of the time. Just, we didn't get out. Was He was a different school. I think the uh, principal at that school at that time was uh, oh, I think of his name right now. But the, uh, the disciplinarian in our barracks was uh, Oh, let's see. That English, I think. What were some of the disciplinary requirements? Well, they wasn't too much. They, we just, well, we'd go to school a half a day and work a half a day, and then after working hours, after supper, well, we had sports and stuff like that, play ball. Did you ever get in trouble? No, I don't think so. Not that I can think of. What would but happen if you did? What, what would be some of the punishments? Well, you'd uh, have to work kitchen for maybe a week, wash dishes. And some of the boys didn't like it them days, wash dishes with the girls, so. Yeah. Was there an age limit? Well, I don't know. Some of them old boys were about 23, 44 years old, so. And they were from six years old up. To about 24. Yeah, they were grown did men. Did they ever give you any physical discipline? Not that I know of. No whipping? Well, you get a whipping, but it's not. You know, didn't hurt you much. If it did, you weren't going to admit it. Yeah. What, uh, what was the most exciting thing that happened to you while you were in the Concho School? Well, trying to be a ball player, I guess. What type? What type of Basketball, ball? baseball, football. No, no. It was a sharp period, though. He was just, uh, it was right after the Jim Tharp period. Mm hmm. No, I just, well, I tell you the truth, if I was a kid, I tried everything, so. Quite an I guess that's why I'm 
around here yet. How old did you say you were? 65. I know it. I'm going to live to be a hundred. Let's talk about your baseball career. How do you, uh, to begin with, how it got started. Well, after we moved from Tulsa up this way, we moved out east of town here, it's three miles, out here with the Rock Creek, South Rock Creek community. So, uh, I heard they had a baseball team here in Shawnee. So there, every evening, I'd try to get my work done to catch that uh, spur right down here, the Katy train comes out of Tecumseh. If I can get down there in time, I can catch it and ride to the ballpark, the Rock Island, the Rock Island ballpark. So uh, I'd get off of the train there. And didn't pay a dime. So I just hopped on. The guy said, where are you going? I said, the ballpark. He says, all right. I'd get off up there. When the ball game was over, I just sat and watched. When the ball game's over, I'd hit that track and I'd run home. So when I get home, Dad'd say, "Where you been?" I said, "Oh, down the river." So I'd tell him, but I didn't tell him I was trying to play ball or wanting to play baseball. Why didn't you? He wouldn't. He didn't want me to. Why didn't? You? Because he said that wasn't good for me. He said, "I want you to take a good look at Jacob Buckhart." He said, "You look at his hands; they all broke up." being a catcher. He said, just take a good sample of that old man. He said, you keep it in mind. Well, it, I didn't keep it in mind. I still had it in my head that I wanted to be a ball player. So I just kept on, kept on. So finally, one day I was up at the ball game and a couple of Rock Island boys didn't show up to stick, and I was sitting there, and this Indian boy here in Shawnee, his name George Alfred. George Alfred. A-L-S-R-E-D. Mm -hmm. He oh, says, uh, told the coach or whoever he was, he said, hey, there's an Indian kid right there to play for you till the boys get here. He said, get out there, that's all he told me. So I said, all right, I grabbed the glove and went out there. That was my first sandlot ball right there, 14 years old. What were you playing? Left field. Had you ever played before? Oh, just around school was all. So I played all right. After the ball game, I went home, and I never went back for a couple of weeks. So the George, I seen him, he says, hey, he said, why didn't you come back to the ball game? I said, why? He said, they're going to give you a job up at the shop, just mowing the grass around there. That's all you had to do. That's the Crystal shop? Rock Island shop. Rock Island. I said, well, I didn't know. So I didn't go back for a couple of weeks. So I went back up there and never thought any more about it, and I just sat and watched the ball games. And so I just kept picking up pointers. And that's how I come me to get here at the Shawnee Milling Company. What caused you to get back into another game? How did you get into another game later? Well, we went, when we moved from Shawnee, then went west to the Little Axe community. There was an old Indian out there named Willie Gibson. Had a ball team out there, and I joined him. We played around, and when he gave it up, his boy taking it over, Richard Gibson. So when him and I got together and we organized, organized us a baseball team, and we come up with a pretty good ball club. Who supported the ball team? Where did the money come from? Was it Miller Company or just... Myself, out of my pocket. What I worked for his 
what I worked here at the mill for. What kind of equipment did you have? Did you have any equipment at all? We had uh, just about any equipment a ball player needed, gloves, shoes, breast protector, mask. Bats, sometimes the boys pitch in and we'll buy us a new bat. And we come up with a good ball club. And How about a uniform? Did you have a we did, starting out out there, we didn't have any uniform. Just all we needed was a ball glove. Who did you play? We played just anybody we can get a ball game with. What kind of record did you make? Well, I can tell you, in after we played out there, I'd taken over the ball club. Richard, he decided he had other things to do and wanted to know if I'd take it. And I said, yeah, I'd take it if you'd be my assistant. And he said, all right. So we come up, I'd taken the boys over in 61. I was 51. I'd taken them over in 51 to 60. We averaged 20 ball games. We just played Saturdays and Sundays and double hitters. And from Saturdays and Sundays through, we start in April, sometimes in May, wind up in September. In them few months there, we've lost, in nine years, we lost 32 ball games. Well, I don't know exactly how many. We'd play better than 20 games through the summer. So I didn't think much about it. So I, one day I ran on to my score books, got them out and checked them over, and that's what I come up with. So you played about 180 or 90 games and lost about 30. 32 games, all we lost. Well, at that time, I'd say about 350, but you ask somebody else and they'll give it to you a little more. Because I played, I hit pretty good. I, when I first started out, I started out in right field. I worked myself clean around to a catcher. I pitched the ball and played every position on the field. Pitched the ball for about 12 years. Did you have Pitch a special ball with you? Did you have a favorite that the guys missed most of the time? No. Just like Curtis Fuller said one time, Bob Fuller said, you just, all you have to do is just rear back and throw it. If they can find it, all right. And if they can't, it's just their hard luck. So. That's the way I played the game. And your team was later taken over by a sponsor, is that right? No. It was never sponsored? Never was sponsored by nobody. Mm -hmm. Were well, you operating all this time out of Little, little Axe? Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. What did you call your team? Little Axe. Little Axe team? Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. In Little Axe, where did you play? Down below the high school or around north no. of the old school up there? We played right there where the lake. Thunderbird Lake's built right and now. Indian power down there. Well, it's set in southeast of us, about a quarter of a mile. Did you ever go down to the Little Axe Power Arts that they had down there? Shepherd's Farm, I believe it was. They used to have power oh, you mean that down there at that pecan grove? Yeah. No, we, the green corn dance, we never go down there. Because they were sick of food, and you didn't want them to do it? No, they were just small tribes went down there. A little while ago, you mentioned Rosie Chisholm mm -hmm. were part of your family. Now, Chisholm Relations had a store down here south and east of Asher on the North Canadian, I mean, on the Canadian River. He's now, are you any relation to those Chisholm? He was married to one of the, it, there was a Chisholm family in there, was married to some of the locals. Are you related with name to any of those, or do you know? That's something I wouldn't know. Yeah, I think they call it Three Springs or something like I've that. I've heard of that place down there, and I've been told that she didn't run that, but I don't know anything about that. Three 
No oh, good God, I don't know. It's quite a while ago. He passed away. He passed away in 1933. He was 89 years old. Did he originally come from Alabama or Tennessee or something in there? Well, as far as I know, he, what he told me, he was just from up around back in East Oak, uh, Hoa, Muskogee, back in them hills up there. He wasn't in the Trail of Tears then? I wouldn't. He never mentioned it to me. He'd have been born around 1840 or a little after. Well, 46, I think. 46. Mm, 1846. Probably very shortly after they arrived here. It's his eastern or western Cherokee, you know. How's that? It was his the eastern or western Cherokee. East. The eastern mm -hmm. Cherokee. Did you know Tushy Hope? Tushy Hope? C-U-S-I-A. Zach and Fox? Don't remember. I knew a Tussie Hall lived out north of town, yeah. Yeah, Tussie Hall, he's real old. Yeah, I knew. He was in my office one time. I knew him. Back down in my office one year, down in the Russian mill. He said that mill wasn't there. He said, I used to hunt here, down in that uh, old place. What caused your father, a Cherokee, to move into this part of the country? Well, it's something I wouldn't know either. But uh, when we left uh, Tulsa County, Sperry, we come to Shawnee, well, the direction he was wanting to go, go west. So we moved out east of town here and stayed to uh, 31, 1931, so we moved to Lilac community, Big Jim country. You were about 18 or so when your father died. Uh, do you recall, and your, and your father was, uh, was in the post-war period and lived through the Civil War with, uh, and, and would remember the Civil War uh, in Indian Territory. Did your father ever recall to you any of the uh, experiences of, uh, that he had as a Cherokee, which became split pretty much during uh, the Civil War? No. You remember any Civil War stories of Indian Territory? No, my dad never talked about no wars or anything. What about life in Indian Territory during the 1850s, 60s, and that early period? Well, Dad told me one time, he says, when he come, don't know where he's been, but down in Texas, I guess, said he come up through here, and he says, where Shawnee he is now, he said, there wasn't nothing there. What? Across the river down here, and, oh, I imagine by, about Santa Fe's shop somewhere, he, he pointed out to me one time, and, as far as I know, what he ever told me about back in them days. And when he went east, northeast into Tulsa, he said there wasn't no Tulsa. It was then with a blacksmith shop. And it was made out of a brush arbor and a little store there made out of a, put up a tent. So that's all was there. Was that the old Lynch store later became? I wouldn't know. He never did. He, my father never speak English. He spoke the Shawnee language and the Cherokee language, but uh, I understood every word he said. I could speak English to him, and he knew what I was saying. But he never spoke it. Never spoke English. Did you speak Cherokee? Well, I did for a while that we come this way, and then I lost that and learned the Shawnee language. Shawnee, Oklahoma, or Shawnee? The Shawnee Indian language. <laughs> <laughs> you got the Shawnee, Oklahoma. Richard, did you have another question? Yeah, I have one or two. You say your name is, uh, what? The Woody Spybuck. Now, right north of Tecumseh, there's a cemetery out in the woods of an artist. Was his name Spybuck or was his name Flybuck? Flybuck. Okay, is, his, is he a descendant of yours? My first cousin. Okay, now that is out in the middle of the field. Uh, and, uh, well, I'll put it this way. I tried to get out there, and I called somebody that was relation, 
and they turned me down. They said, we don't let people go into it. Now, uh, I'm going to put you on the spot. Do you think you could get us so we could go in and get a picture of that cemetery? Or the, uh, Incidentally, you might tell who that artist was. Give a little background of that artist, because he's really good. Well, it's Ernest Spybrook. And as far as I know, I've seen some of his paintings. And it, to me, they're pretty real. And that's the part I know about his painting. How long ago was it that he died? Or do you, can you recall that? Well, I can't recall that. I've got a letter somewhere I wrote down when he died, but right now I wouldn't know. Weren't some of his pictures on display in the state capitol for a while, or are they still They're up there? Still there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What are the uh, what are his paintings? What uh, what's the thrust of his paintings? Well, what he's got up there and what he did have around there is just the way the Indians live, the way they uh, have their war dances or whatever dance they put on, he sets and draws the whole picture of it. Do you have any No, I sure don't. I tried to get one off my boy, and he said he didn't want to lose it. He had two. And about a week after that, his house burned down, burned them both up. And I've been trying to get a hold of one over at Tecumseh from a fella, and he don't want to turn it loose. We could take, with permission, we could take pictures of them. I mean, photographs of the things and go from there. Would, <coughs> is there any objection to something like that? Well, I don't know. Now, you take, I'll tell you where there's some ad. Now, you might get in touch with this fellow. Spencer. Or where it's shown, or it comes to. His name is Spencer? Mm hmm. I got I wouldn't wait for we just all I knew about Spencer. But I'll tell you where he lives. He I think he remodeled his house and everything and he's got a, a historical place there now. You go to Ralph, huh? Ralph Spencer. That's it. Yeah, Ralph. Ralph Spencer. Mm hmm You go to uh Tecumseh and go west to Tecumseh. On Highway Nine. Mm-hmm. But you go just the edge of the Compton, and you find a blacktop road going north, just the edge of town there. Go a mile and go a mile west, and I think it's the quarter north, house sitting on this side of the road there. Right there the lake. Right there by the Compton Lake. Did you ever know the artist? Did you really up? Oh, yeah, my first cousin. Tell us some things about him that you remember personally. Well, he... Ain't too much to tell about him. He's just a nice fella. How'd he learn to paint? He just picked it up like I did one time. So Are you an artist? I started out being a quit. Why'd you quit? The lamp light got too dim. Didn't have electric lights then. You started this when you were a little older? No, I, st I started that after I, well, before I married and after I married. What were you painting? Just anything I could look at or see something. I'd go home, sit there and think about it, and I'd just start drawing it. Did you paint Indian face? Mm-hmm. So I just give it up, quit, and let my granddaughter take it up. She used some of your material. Is that what you're saying? Mm-hmm. Your, your suggestions and your artwork. Let's go back to the cemetery a minute. Uh, is he the only person that's buried in that, or is that your family cemetery? That's his cemetery, his family cemetery. He, each Indian person out there has their own family cemetery, except the ones that hasn't. They got a certain place out there they bury them people. Pretty well overgrown with blackjacks and stuff like that in there now. And somebody said that the tombstones and things were either falling down or being knocked down through vandalism. Is this true? 
Well, I don't know about that. I never hardly go over there. Just whenever Ernest's daughter called me over and wants something, I go over there. Did they build Indian houses on top of this thing? They didn't go that route at all. Do you know anything about the American Indian Church? Mm -mm. The Big Jim Country? Well, there ain't too much to tell about that Big Jim Country. From the chief, Big Jim, he was the chief of the absentee Shawnees. I heard, now that, that's just hearsay. That J I am. Mm hmm. Is that the same one? Huh? Did he go to Mexico and then come back? Uh, I think that's right. I'm. No. As far as I know about that, that's all I know. What side? Are you the Shawnee? Yeah, I'm the Shawnee. Oh, you say the man's name was Big Jim J I M. Did he have a ferry crossing right near Nittles? Did he have a ferry crossing right near Nittles, Little Axe, where he, he had a tractor and towed the cars and wagons across the river and flood and things like that? Was that the same Big Jim or was that Big John? Uh, it might be Big John, but I don't think it's Big Jim. Uh, you know you know Big John. Huh? You know who I'm talking about called Big John? <laughs> Big John would be... Must be John Spoon. That's the only one I know they call Big John out there. John Spoon. But he was the one that had the, the tractor at the crossing on Little River, so he could pull the wagons and things across the river in the event of flood or something like that. I don't know about that. that and again, might be a might be a good one too. I don't know. Didn't they somewhere in uh, oh, the middle, eight, 1918 18 or something like that, didn't they come in there with, the government come in there with dredges and things like that and clean out all that river and straighten it so they made a straight course down through there, or do you remember this? I don't remember that. That was already there whenever I came down there. I'm talking about the area of the falls up on the river. You know where the falls yeah. were. They're on the lake now. But you remember that river is absolutely straight up there. And they changed the course of the river so that it's a controlled flooding. I thought maybe you knew something about that no, when that happened. I don't know anything about that. But they had two dredges up there on the river, mm -hmm. you know, to clean out the river. Yeah. Can't make them all. Now, your name, do you have an Indian name too? And how do you say your Indian name? <laughs> you know, I wouldn't know. I wouldn't know. I wouldn't want to get my Indian name on. Okay, well, that's all right. I have an Indian name, too. They call me Fast Talker. Can you imagine? I'm <laughs> <Back> Iowa. <laughs> but, uh... Maybe you tell us something about your name. No. Were you ever around here, sir? Huh? Were you ever around here, sir? Uh-uh. I mean, no, I didn't find you. Benson Park. Do you know anything about it? <laughs> yeah, I spent a few days there around Benson Park. Can you tell us a little bit about it? Well, at that time, to me, it was a pretty nice park. A lot of rides, roller skate park uh, place there, and they had a merry-go-round place swing, baseball park, rodeo ground. Did you play in the baseball park? No. You had to learn. Yeah. Learn. Yeah, it used to be a pretty nice park. Uh. Street car. Mm-hmm. You know, we were talking about the street car used to be called Jenny Lynn. It was a narrow gauge that went from uh, Shawnee to Tecumseh, and later on to the Frisco took it over when it, when they uh, went down to Asher. Now, yeah. do you remember how narrow the narrow gauge was by any chance? 
Was it two feet or three feet? Now they dammed up that little creek that went through there and they had a, a lake or a lagoon or something and they put boats in it and then they had a bridge over the top of it, some kind of a cantilever bridge over the top there. You remember that? Where you could put the boat in the lake and have that little creek that comes through there, they dammed it. And then you could put the boat in the lake and have your boating in dry Oklahoma. Well, at that time there wasn't no lake there that I can remember. They had a, just a little old bridge, kind of an arch over the creek there. Yeah, well, they dammed that creek. Goes, goes over to the roller skate ring. And didn't they uh, start out in the first place to have a movie or something down there, and they took the movie out and converted it into the plum? Isn't that what happened? I wouldn't know anything about that. But did you go swimming in the plum? Mm -mm. Uh, now, there's one other thing I was wondering about. You played baseball. Did you ever play stickball? Mm -mm. That was too rough. Well, it's, yeah, it's a little rough, all right. Could you tell us a little bit about what stickball is? Well, no, I couldn't because that most of the Seminole Indians play that stickball. Uh, do you know what typically means, what the name means? By no, I sure don't. Are the Kickapoos, well, we're getting a little off of your background, but are the Kickapoos native of here, or are they further out west? Well, they're further on west here. They're around McLeod, most of those Kickapoos are. Around McLeod there. And some of them lived in Mexico. They were a very strong breed of Indian, I mean, tribe of Indians, weren't they? I think there's a book out on them, uh, Kickapoo's The Lord of the Plains, or something like that, or do you remember that book? <coughs> I don't Mexico. I remember that book. Uh, they were northwest of Shawnee, and the stuff on the old side, they went the other side there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we want to get on that wiki up business. Do you know anything about those wiki up? Um, Not you know a thing. How they were made? Well, I don't know how they made them. Some still out there. I mean, they're uh, kind of straw, uh, kind of straw uh, stuff. Like you well, what I've seen one is made it out of straw, and one of them I saw was made out of bark. Ellen Bart. Had branches and so forth to make the support. Mm -hmm. uh, if you remember, <coughs> when we used to come down to Oklahoma City on the old highway uh, 10, 15 years ago, they used to have a whole bunch of teepees out in the field. Do you remember those? No, I don't remember those. Do, do you remember, what do you remember? They used to have the teepees out west of town on our Highway 270. Well, I knew where that, I think I know where you're talking about over there at that Kickapoo Fairground, where they have their dances over on the north side of the road. Well, no, this is on, the, well, it might have been the north. I can't tell because it goes to the bank over there. Because you, you come out of Dale, you're going east. Then you cut across going southeast, and they, they set on this side. Well, yeah. That's about right. And they stayed up there all the time, year after year. They never did take them down. They let them stay up there. Now, some of these uh, wiki-ups that we're talking about, there's one or two of them now down on uh, 270 and Highway 3, right about, the, you know, where that Texaco station is? There's one right in there. And I've tried to go in there to get pictures, and they won't let me take a picture because of, I don't know what it is, religious reason, or what is it? Would he, do you know? No, I don't. I was thinking that we could find you and get you to get into those things. I think we lost it there. <coughs> Some of them in the city. About the They're pretty city. tough nuts to crack. Yeah, they go like nobody from them knows around in what they're but doing. The yeah, yeah, the, the older the people. Shoot the, the, the young ones will do anything for a dollar, so <laughs> that's what we're trying to get. I tell you where you you might get one of those bark house deals. 
or wake you up, whatever you want to call it. And right out west of town here where this here uh, alfalfa mill is, yeah. if you like you going out to the lake, just go over the underpass and come to the first section and go north. As you go up that little hill, you turn into your right there. Let's see, what is her name? Cup of heat. The old lady. God, I wouldn't know. <laughs> That's the only one I'd know right here close. You, could, you might get a picture of that. Well, we certainly would like to get a picture, but not to trespass on anybody's rights, but to preserve this stuff. And I would like to talk to the man that built it to find out how they were built. No, I think her boy still living. Uh, he might be living there. I can't think of his name now. Lewis, I think. Lewis Cup of Heat. You say that's out near the Alfalfa Mountain? Yeah. yeah, you're going out west on Lake Road, going out. Well, it'd be your, let's see. <laughs> yeah, they got one there, because I was past there here. Let's see, a couple of weeks ago, coming from Walmart, coming around on that four lane, and there's a rodeo ground. I haven't looked across and I've seen that thing over there yet. Tell about your own brothers and sisters and what you all did as children. Well, then, well, there was three girls and five boys, eight of us. Which were you in the line? Well, I'm about the uh, fifth one. What were some of the games and some of the activities that you all engaged in? Well, we... Back at that time, we didn't hardly have any games. The kids, even the boys, sisters, they didn't even try, try to participate in anything like that. I guess I was the only one who tried everything. Did the girls do homework or do They never done nothing like that. Well, yeah, mother done some beadwork, belt, something like that, but she didn't do it all the time. What were some of the things you did together as children? Oh, swimming, that's about all. Fighting. Did you ever win? Well, yeah, I'm foot race I do. I'd run and get out of trouble. You said swimming. What did you do? Did you swim in the North Canadian? Mm -hmm. No, we swim up there north of Tulsa and Bird Creek. Oh, Tulsa? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's up near Bartlesville. Yeah, it's 10 miles north of Tulsa. And when you got down here, you didn't swim very much? Didn't swim too much. Got down here until we moved west around the Big Jim country down there, and then we swim the river down there. <laughs> we didn't, didn't wear anything. We just jump in because we were, because we were out where nobody was around. What river are you talking about? Little River. They used to have a lot of deep holes on Little River. Yeah, they did that, yeah. No, we tried it one time, but I grabbed a hold of a snake and I let him go and I quit grabbing fish. But they did have a lot of good-sized catfish in the river down there at one time. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Kind of rough, Yeah, we stick our feet down there in them holes. It wasn't very wide, and we'd find a hole, and we'd just go down and reach, you know, our arms back in and see what we can find. But that time I was unlucky. I grabbed that snake. And what kind of was it? you remember? I don't know. It must have been a water monster, but I didn't hold him long <laughs> enough. I didn't hold him long enough. Yeah. <laughs> Noodling, yeah. river at that time clear mm -hmm. and it had quite a bit of water in it didn't it well more than it does now yeah and right now they don't have any holes in there anymore oh yeah they got some further down the river there they, at those falls now there used to be some nice big holes mm -hmm. up there those falls are about what three feet four feet high yeah. and they had a whole series of 
Yeah, you get on down the river there a mile or two, and there's some pretty good holes down in there. Um, do they have uh, powwows around here, Indian dances? Yes. Is there any way that you can go to them? Well, I mean, will they let the people go visit them, or are they kind of <laughs> closed to <society? laughs> Yeah. They have one right out south of town here. I think it's last week in this month. Where's the calendar at? Ain't got any? Mm -hmm. I think it's the last week in this month. That's right. The public can go? Mm-hmm. It's uh, oh, part of Watermy Powwow. They get some press on this one, don't they? No, they don't. Uh, we, we can go on correction on this one, on that drum field. We've been to... Uh, the powwows. There's not a correction, but it, I mean, it's a fact that we have the wrong impression. Uh, we go into powwows quite often, and the signs are all over the place. No alcoholic beverage allowed on the premises, uh, premises, in which I had the idea that it was just a jump drunken powwow, but boy, it isn't. That's and big powwow is out northeast of Johnny. That's open. That's the fee you pay to get in. In fact, it's advertised. They launch this stuff. Do they have teepees set up there for Yeah, I'll get the they're not there all the time. I don't know. Is that on the back front? Yeah. Right? That's on the back front. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh it's quite a it's quite a show and as far as that drink is concerned, and the way the sheriff handles that thing, it does not it's not quite the people have the wrong impression about them a lot drinking. Now they used to be a long time ago. Now they're not they have a huh? I was going to buy my beef. Well they had the uh the way the sheriff handles that, they used to load the jails up. How about the Indian sing? Do you have any all night Indian sings around? No, not the Shawnee tribe, though. Do yeah. you all go back to any of your old customs, or are you just the American things now? No, we, that's one thing about that country down there. They, it's all old customs. And, uh, Can you tell us something about That's the reason I told my wife, I said, if they ever ask me anything about it, I said, they ain't going to get nothing out of me because we don't talk about what goes on down there. Mm -hmm. Why is it that you don't talk about it? I don't know. The way I look at it, there have been, been a lot of people wanting to find out things down there about the way those Indians do, and nobody gives it out to them. The thing is, though, that uh, as generations go by, uh, many of the old customs go by and are gone, and uh, so this is, uh, this is in part a way of... Uh, recording for the future even after the people there are all gone some of the customs and some of the ceremonies and things that happen it's not uh, it's not a matter of uh, trying to pry into another community as much as it is making it a matter of a historical record uh, for people generations down the line we're talking not uh, we're talking as much for people generations down the line when all these people are gone as much as anything well, I couldn't say too much about that down there but because uh, them people down there got plenty of everything sewed up. They just keep everything quiet. They don't let nothing out. And I never go around, you know, to visit them and see what's going on. If they want to find out anything, they come to me. If I know, I'll tell them. If I don't know, I can't help them. So. Are the children keeping up? With well, okay. some of them, yeah. Mm -hmm. Some of them doing pretty good at it. They're just now beginning to start picking it up pretty good. Are you trying to encourage them? Are the uh, older people trying to encourage the younger people mm -hmm. to continue the... Yeah, they are. Are the customs of rain dances here? Are they still dancing green? Oh, yeah. Oh, I just dance like the rest of them. What do you call your dance? Corn dance? Rain dance? Just corn dance. Certainly. Why do you do a corn dance? That's something I wouldn't know either. They just 
got certain songs for it, and that you dance to the song they sing. They're, and you know it when they start singing it, what it's going to be. Are there different styles that uh, would make you recognize, say, a corn dance from a rain dance? Is there something in the style or the rhythm or the beat or the tune that would make you know what dance it uh, relates to? It's just the way they start out singing. I see. By the song. Mm -hmm. These are songs for corn dance. Yeah. Is there a way to describe how you do it, or is it just kind of just the feel that you understand? It's just the feel when they start out, when they first hit the drum, and when they first start singing, then you know what it's going to be there. Now, is it a different step? Oh, yeah, there's all kinds of steps to each dance. Uh, the thing is, the music is so subtle in these dances, and uh, you can't hardly determine the change. And uh, now, yeah, it's, it's like, for instance, uh, what is it, a round dance? They, they're standing there, and the beat changes, and they take two or three steps forward, and the beat stops, and then they step up and down, and then they keep along with that one for a while, and uh, they keep on moving their head as the beat. And the change, the change is so subtle, you can't hardly recognize it. And then, they, were you ever the head dance man? You were one of those. Never was one of those. Or, uh, how about the head dance lady? Now, you're not one, but I mean, uh, you were so tired. I really no. like that. I never no. did that. Okay, now, do you know anything about uh, giveaways? No, that's the mostly uh, second foxes do something like that, or Potawatomi's. I don't know anything about that giveaway stuff. Uh, mm. They give away a tremendous amount of stuff. away a whole lot of material. I mean, even a horse. They'll give away a horse. Some. They don't work to make a horse, but I mean, they go that far. Oh, yeah. And uh, then they throw the stuff on the ground. Say, here you are. Come and take what you want. It's hard to believe how they do that. But I thought maybe your, the Cherokees don't do that. Now, the idea of the rain dance is to encourage rain. Isn't that right? <laughs> I guess. I don't know. I never did is the idea of the corn dance to uh, encourage uh, a, a more bumper crop? No, I wouldn't know that either. That's what they tell us, you know, that's our suggestion of your dance. No, I couldn't you say because it, there's a, uh, this corn dance, there's a lot of people dance that dance, Seminole, Creeks, and uh, I couldn't say what that, I that is. Yeah. It could be. So it celebrates. I wonder if they had a rain dance last week. Someone did. <laughs> Washed all of mine away. <laughs> Your coin? Yeah. You have a farm down there? Mm-hmm. You're not right on the river, are you? No, I'm on uh, the concrete. Uh, you got a lot of concrete? Got out? Hi there. Concrete got out? Oh, yeah. Look like Thunderbird Lake. Oh, corn, potatoes, just something put up for the winter. Not too much. Well, I was wondering about something. We thought I'd heard it. A tie in with the Shawnee Mill or something. Did you work in the mill? How did the mill get into this? You know, well, we got baseball and, and, and we talked about the mill yet, but I didn't quite catch Well, I came here and I would work in Norman. And we played this mill and had a baseball team. And we played them a few times and beat them. So I was working at Norman, getting a dollar an hour. So a couple, three guys come out there one evening and told me, said, say, how'd you like to play some baseball with us? And I knew who they was, and I said, oh, I don't know. So they told me, said, well, I'll tell you what we'll do. I said, uh, they said, if you come and play ball with us, said, we'll give you a job as long as you want to work. 
And I said, where do you pay? He says, 80 cents. And I was getting a dollar just sitting down watching them fellas work. So I went home. I mean, I told my wife after they left, I said, what do you think about that? She says, what is it? I said, I'm getting a dollar after watching them guys work. And I says, they offered me 80 cents an hour with at the mill work and play ball. She says, well, why don't you look at it this way? If it's raining, bad weather, you can't work. But if it's raining and bad weather, you'll be working over at the mill. Inside, I says, well, I'll take it then. So that's how come me to get in this flour mill over here. What year was that? You see, 48. No, oh God, I couldn't tell you. Just every now and then, to finally got up where it looked pretty good. Still working? No, I retired now. No, when I retired, it's 522, I think, what it is. Now, you are, uh, uh, you had mentioned your own ball team. Were you, you were playing on a mill ball team then, uh, after you came here in 48, but were you still playing with your little axe ball team? Mm -mm. You quit that? I quit that. So what years did the little axe ball team operate? 52 to 60. Yeah, but you said you came to work here in 48. I know what I say, 48, see. Yes. But, uh, but your little Oh, axe you mean my little axe team? Your little axe team. Yeah. Oh. Well, yeah, I come here in 48 and uh, worked three years. And the meal team just busted up, see. So it's doing pretty good. So they just said, we'll fold up. We ain't making no money, losing it. So we just quit, and so I went back out there, and we started in 52. So the, the mill team only operated three years? Mm-hmm, that's all they operated. And never reopened? No, but I was hoping they did. Mm-hmm. And that's where my ball club got all their equipment and stuff out of me. I see. Did you, did you uh, inherit any of the mill equipment? No, mm -mm, I didn't want nothing. I just bought my own stuff. Uh, you were talking about the Indian dances and things like that, and you dancing in them. Do you have your own dancing clothes, like your rattles and uh, your eagle feathers or anything like that? No. I just have a shirt, that's all. And you have a tuxedo on your shirt? Mm-mm. Well, our tribe down there don't. Uh, not at all? Mm, they got their costume, but they're not this fancy stuff. They just, well, I'd say, I don't know, 100 years, centuries ago, what they wear. That's what they just keep uh, making. Well, the same like thing over and over. This one out here too. Now, you were talking about Indian dances and things like that. I went down to an Indian dance, green corn dance, at the uh, south of the school, the Little Axe, down in that pecan grove. <coughs> and uh, at that particular time, it was 10, 15 years ago, before the lake came in there. And uh, they, when they were dancing, they did have costumes. Now, the, guy, the men were using, a, what would you call it, a long cloth or whatever, and they had moccasins, and they had Indian feathers in their hands, and uh, they had the beaded rattles. Now, is that a different deal than what you're talking about 
You say the Cherokees don't do this? No, the Cherokees, they're from around Tullesaw, Tahlequah, down in there. So I don't know what they, what they do over there. Well, what we were saying, we didn't have any, you don't, you don't have an Indian costume. And now what are you dancing with? Shawnees. Shawnees. Okay. Now the Shawnees do not. That's the absentee Shawnees. Okay. Now the uh, Kickapoos up around uh, Little Rock do have their Indian dress whenever they dance, because these people did. Oh, then that's a powwow. What you talking about? Sir. What we do is different from a powwow. See, we just have our dances twice a year, spring and fall. That's all. Well, you don't call them a powwow. Uh-uh. Well, just a dance, just a ceremony dance. They got, I think some of them call it. I don't know what that means, but what they call it. Well, let me ask you this one. How about peyote? Does that come in there? I don't know about peyote. That don't come in there. That's a different group, I think. But it does come in in little acts. We do have that in there once in a while. Well, let's say. That's a different group comes in on that. Oh, we can go out to other people and watch them or get in with them. But most of our people down there don't have these pretty feathers and stuff like that, beads. I think we're back at the end of this tape. Do you want to, uh, do you have <coughs> more than you want, or do you want to swing it oh, over? I think we can stop right now. Uh -huh. I imagine that uh -huh. man is getting tired of yes. all our conversation. <laughs> do we have anything else we can say? No, I think that's about all. All you're going to tell. Oh, I'm going to tell. I can't think of anything else. Well, this has been an interview in June of 1979 in Shawnee with uh, Woody Spybuck. And we certainly appreciate appreciate you coming in. Thank you.